training in 20 times gravity. Hang on a second, I'll be right back. I'm gonna turn the gravity back down to one G. <laughs> All right, everyone. I feel light as a feather now, so let's get started. Welcome to another episode of Lift Busters. Now in today's video, we're gonna investigate a question I've had for a very long time, even since I was a little kid, and I'm sure many of you guys have wondered this as well. So, in my favorite animated series, Dragon Ball Z, both Goku and Vegeta test their limits by training in this gravity simulator room to essentially get stronger and faster. So, basically this technology is supposed to alter the gravity around you to where you can start at 1G and turn the gravity all the way up to 450 Gs, which is pretty insane. So, my job today is to first answer the question, can we even create this artificial gravity room? And if so, can you work out in it? How many Gs can your body even handle? And if so, what kind of workouts and exercises can you add to your routine to jumpstart your Dragon Ball Z training? So, if you guys are ready, let's go Super Saiyan. All right, so before we get into all this, we have to first understand how gravity even works. With the possibility of traveling to other worlds in the future becoming more of a reality, we may one day end up on a planet that does have more intense gravity than Earth's. The movie Interstellar was all about gravity. When Matthew McConaughey landed on that water world planet, the gravity is supposed to be at 130% or 1.3 Gs. All right, all right, all right. So in space, the more mass an object has, the more gravitational pull the object will have. Therefore, the water planet in Interstellar should have more mass than Earth if the gravity is 1.3 Gs, where the Earth is only measured at 1 G. So, for instance, our moon has less mass, so its gravity is only going to be 0.16 Gs. Hence why when you see images of astronauts on the moon, they literally have to bounce around to move. Before we can start training at 20 times gravity, we have to be able to create a gravity room first. Now the one in DBZ is aboard a spaceship and all Goku has to do is walk up to it, push a few buttons, and bam, 20 times gravity. Now in reality, there is no simple room setup that can do that, but scientists have already been creating artificial gravity for a while now. You pretty much need a centrifuge. Think of it like a spinning bucket of water going around. They even portray a ship with this design in the movie The Martian. There's also a carnival ride called the Gravitron that is based off of this same design. It spins around really fast and the guests inside the ride get stuck to the walls. I remember writing this when I was just a kid and trying to do sit-ups just like Goku. Goku! I can't believe you're so strong! Well, I did train at a hundred times normal gravity. F Man, no wonder you killed them so easily! Fuck. In Dragon Ball Z, while on his way to planet Namek, Goku increases the gravity all the way up to 100 times. And Vegeta, as he was training to fight against the androids, trained at 450 times gravity. Now you can argue that because Goku and Vegeta are both from an alien race called the Saiyans, that their bodies were able to adapt to withstand those intense forces over their training time. Of course, humans are a little bit different. The show does have Yamcha, one of the human fighters, train on King Kai's planet, which is supposed to be 10 times gravity, but that even seems nearly impossible. So what can the human body really withstand? From multiple studies, we found that first, an untrained person with no assistance can withstand up to about five Gs for brief periods of time. A trained person with mechanical assistance can withstand up to about nine Gs for brief periods of time. However, all these studies were done in a seated position they weren't walking around a room, they weren't working out or training in that environment. When we are experiencing G-force, blood is drawn away from the brain and ends up down by our legs. By flexing your glutes and legs, you're able to prevent the blood from pooling in your lower body. There are even special suits that will help with this maneuver. Due to this reaction to G-force, we as humans are limited to how much gravity we can withstand. But that doesn't completely rule out the idea of training in extreme gravity. So. Let's say you are in a gravity room. Besides the fact that you would now weigh more, all of the equipment in the room would be much heavier too. This is because of how weight is measured. Weight equals mass times gravity. On Earth, gravity has an acceleration rate of 9.8 meters per second squared, or 1g. If you increase either the mass of an object or the acceleration rate of gravity, the object will weigh more. We will use two times gravity as an example. 
I weigh about 180 pounds on Earth. I haven't measured it anywhere else. So now if I double the gravity from 9.8 meters per second squared to 19.6 meters per second squared, then I will now weigh 360 pounds. So now my entire body has to withstand my new weight. Say you're benching 135 pounds, using the same barbell and plates at two times gravity, you'll now be benching equivalent to 270 pounds. Now that we understand gravity and its relationship to weight, what will happen if you try training in this environment? So your muscles will adapt to the resistance training as it would on the ground and your body will feel heavier as well, which will make each exercise more intense. Even just lifting your arm up without any weight at all becomes more difficult. We also found that in a study of fighter pilots who routinely experienced two to six Gs while flying saw an 11% increase in the density of their spine. Another thing to note, pumping blood would be more difficult, but your body could adapt to that as well. So it seems that body weight exercises would probably be most beneficial due to this type of environment, such as push-ups, pull-ups, and sit-ups. And to relate it back to DBZ, that's mostly what you see Goku doing anyways. Overall, you can train in artificial gravity, but only a few G-forces until you need some outside assistance to keep you from losing consciousness. Just like progressive overload, you would have to slowly work your way up, and I'm talking decimal points. And your first time in the gravity chamber, you may want to start with just 1.2 or 1.3 Gs. Once you're comfortable, then you can start increasing the force. There's obviously, though, some kind of limit. Think of it as a deadlift max. Some people can dedicate their life to deadlifting and work up to nearly a thousand pounds, but that's still their limit. Realistically, if you train and acclimate your body to the extreme g-force over time, it still seems impossible to go train in an environment beyond 4 g's. Back to my example of being 180 pounds at 4 g's, I would weigh 720 pounds. Just standing up would be equal to many of these power lifters one rep max on deadlift. I believe that there are benefits to training in an artificial gravity environment. Even without training, your heart will beat harder and your bone density will increase over time to support your new weight. So add training to the mix and now you are building up strength all over your body. With every exercise you do, such as bench press and shoulder press, your major muscles will be working hard, but I believe your stabilizer muscles will be working on overdrive because of the constant increase in G-force. Every movement you do will be heavier, and even while you are resting between sets, your body will be working to support your new weight, which will cause additional fatigue. Bottom line, if you do not have say in blood like Goku and Vegeta, training in anything over 5 G seems completely out of the question, let alone 450 Gs. So that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I'm done filming, so now it's your turn to subscribe and comment below. And now I'm going to go train to get my power level up over 9,000. See you guys. Hey everyone, it's Brian. If you like this video and would like to further support our channel, make sure to visit our official Patreon page. Every contribution helps us to continue making great quality videos. Thanks again for watching.